Hey guys, I'm going to explain the settings in its entirety because some of my friends and new people that I've met looked up YouTube videos and top YouTubers going over the settings, but they don't explicate every single detail in the settings. So I'm going to go over every single minute detail in the settings section and include clips and tips that make it easier for you as the audience to better understand when you toggle certain settings off and on. One more element that I'll add to this video is chapters so that you can skip through the video and find what you're looking for. If you have any other questions about the settings, I'll be more than happy to answer them in the comment section down below. With that all said, let's begin. My veterans and seasoned players, if you guys already know this, you can skip this chapter and go into the next one. But this is kind of like for the beginners and the newbies that don't understand what's going on when they first download the game. On the top right hand corner, there's going to be a two by three or six little boxes. That's your menu. Next to that is a gear. That's going to be the settings. Next to that is going to be the notification bell or requests. And next to that is going to be a headset for your channels. And then there's a little box inside that symbol that's for um, what Warzone calls whispers. I just call them silent texts. So now clicking on the headset, it's going to be titled channels. You're going to have gaming channel where you can invite your friends into your party. Then you have my channels where you can create your own channel where you can talk privately to other people. And then you have whispers where people can text you. So now clicking on the green banner above this section right here, you'll be able to toggle on and off your mic as well as other people in your party. Moving on to the notification bell. Here you're going to have have requests from parties, friends, and channels. If you click on the little icon, you're gonna have a selection of which themes do you want the request to come from, party, friends, or channels. I'm just gonna briefly just show you the settings, what it looks like. We're gonna talk about it more in depth within the video. Let's click on the menu. Here we're gonna have the inbox, social, help, and a little battery health icon. Tapping on the inbox, we're gonna have our mail, the unread and read. If you click the little icon, you'll be able to select what you wanna see if it's the service updates, rewards, or promotions. Moving on to social, you'll be able to see your friends if they're online or offline, recent people you played with, and add new individuals to your friends list. But you have to add the hashtag and the seven digits after their username. Now we're looking at party. You can invite your friends into your party from here too. Now this is pretty self-explanatory. You can look for a party here and you can edit the preferences. Lastly, we have help. In here, we're gonna see different tabs that explain different parts of the game. If you're very, very new to the game and have never played Warzone in your life, this will help you a lot. This will explain Gulag, it'll explain the zone, it'll explain a ton of things. Definitely check it out. Let's move on to the settings. Here in the overview, we're gonna look at the customized HUD and a few other features that are in here. Starting off with the weapon trigger. Auto fire, fire all weapons except launchers automatically when aiming at enemies. Custom, set to fire automatically, misspelled or manually based on weapon type. Manual fire, fire weapons manually with buttons. So auto fire and custom is most likely for really, really new people that have never played a mobile game or for people that might have disabilities and struggle with multiple button layout. All that being said, I use manual fire for my layout so that I can have full control of my firing button. Automation off, playing without automation features, on, playing with all automation features, Features, custom play with some automation features just keep it at custom I deem some of these automations to be useful and others not alrighty before we go into custom HUD let's look at control sets I cannot stress this enough make sure you select one of these presets first before continuing to the customized hub because if you select the wrong one or if you didn't even do it and you and you come over here trying to select a preset all of your progress in the customized hub will be reset and you have to do the whole process process all over again, which is a headache. What is circled is what you're going to need to be focusing on when making a selection. Popular is the one I'm currently using. What it says is most automations off, compact squad display, tactical sprint on button, manual parachute. Next one is default auto. Most automations off, compact squad display, tactical sprint on button, manual parachute. Default manual uses most automations off, compact squad display, auto sprint lock, manual parachute. Enhanced auto. Most automations off, compact squad 
about display tactical sprint on button hold to ads pro most automations off compact squad display auto sprint lock manual parachute toggle weapons most automations off compact squad display tactical sprint on button weapon hud gesture classic most automations off compact squad display tactical sprint on button manual parachute fortified most automations off compact squad display tactical sprint on button manual parachute and then lastly you have the default controller okay so that is the hub preset breakdown a few key factors to take away from this is the auto sprint lock i'm i would have to get fact checked but if i'm not wrong that will disable your tax sprint completely so you won't even be able to see it in the customized hud another detail to take away is the different presets the buttons are going to be displayed differently in each one so you're going to have to choose go into a couple games figure out which one you prefer then you can start customizing your hud let's move on to customize hud let me leave this on the record i've never played the call of duty warzone mobile beta but i do have about six years of experience with mobile gaming that's from call of duty mobile to pubg mobile so this layout right here is on an ipad and it's a six finger claw layout but this is an old layout i have a recent one that i'm going to show at the very end of the video of what i'm currently using and if you guys are learning at least one thing please leave a like and if you see potential in me, I would really, really appreciate it if you subscribed. Let's get back to the video. So we're at movement. You see the um, arrow that's above the virtual joystick? That can be a problem. If you have always sprint, it will, if it's too close, it will activate and you will stop ADSing. So I have a couple clips before I made adjustments and after I made adjustments and it makes the world of a difference. So you can see here, every time I touch the always sprint button, it will stop ADSing. But as soon as I adjusted that, I was like, yo, this is really working. So then I touched it just to see if it's actually the sprint button. And it was true. It was really making you stop ADSing. So now looking at the movements, the variants of it, we have enable direction zone. If anybody knows what this is, can you leave it in the comments down below? I tried testing it, trying to see what it does if I turned it off and I didn't really see any difference. So I left it on. Previous variant for movement that we're looking at was default. Now we're in classic. Enable direction zone and it has intended auto mantle. I stay away from this one. This actually turns off your tax sprint. So be careful with this one. It might be a bug on my end. Now let's move to select loadout button. Here it's simple for you to select what loadout you're gonna run in pregame. See and test some guns out. Or you can select it above right here where the arrow is and then select the loadout from there. You can also hide the button just like you can hide various other buttons tip time you can press and hold unfollow or you can give your leadership to somebody else looking at the mini map and clicking on the variants you're gonna have mini map shape which i have at square and then mini map rotation which i disabled because i just want the map to be stationary and not moving where i'm looking now make sure that this is the ads fire button because the hit fire i have disabled and i'll explain why in a moment clicking on the variants you're gonna see manually fire semi-auto so what this does is if you have it off it will grab gradually shoot the rounds if you're holding the firing button down on a semi-automatic weapon. Now looking at release to call in mortar and airstrikes, I leave this off. I just want to be able to tap it just so I can get the mortar strikes to come in as fast as possible. Now looking at the right side of my page, we're going to look at the equipment slots. Looking at variants, you're going to have default. This is in steps. You're going to have to click your equipment, aim, and then press the firing button to throw, which in my opinion is too slow, but a lot more accurate. They directional throw. It's a lot more simpler. All you have to do is click the equipment and your operator will throw the equipment. With this, it's a lot more difficult when aiming. So you have to make sure you're aiming at the right spot where you want to throw your equipment. Let's look at crouch. We can change our stance from merge to split. This is between what your preferences are. For me, it's split because I'm able to transition quicker, smoother. So I enjoy that. Weapon slots. Looking at variants, we're going to have classic. So this is going to have two slots that we can see the guns that we have on our operator. Then you can alternate fire type from button to gesture, show ammo, integrated and separated. Minimum 
minimalist is the one that I use. It's the simplest in my opinion. It's just one click to alternate your weapons. Multi gesture is the same as minimalist, but you have to swipe to change your weapons. Now let's move on to aiming down sight. In the variance section, you're able to enter and exit ADS with button or double tap. The last feature in custom HUD is the squad info. In variance, in the default section, I'm able to toggle on and off the display myself. I keep it off because I just want to see my teammates. Looking at compact, it's a really cool feature. It's just gonna show the number, the little pieces of armor, and a little bit of the health and the money, but it has no names. So you have to be aware of the your teammates' names and their numbers. This feature might be really good for phones, but keep in mind, you're gonna have to get used to this type of variant. Also, you can change from column to line to square. Now let's hop into gameplay. First, we're gonna focus on the automation section. So you can toggle these automations. So off play without automation features, on play with all automation features, custom play with some automation features. I have it a custom because I enjoy using some of these features. So let's read these features. Weapon auto pickup, off pick up weapons manually, on pick up weapons automatically. The best thing to do is just leave it on. Looking at auto pickup starter handgun, off the starting handgun will never be auto picked up. On the starting handgun is automatically picked up based on the class priority configured. Since I don't use by class and we jump into the map with a pistol, I'm not going to be looking for a handgun. I'm going to be looking for an assault rifle or something heavy. Another thing is that sometimes you have to drop the pistol just to pick up a gun. Weapon auto equip off pick up weapons won't be equipped automatically on pick up weapons will be equipped automatically weapon auto pickup options intel slots pick up weapons automatically as long as you have an empty weapon slot or the intel weapon by class weapons are picked up according to the priority list out of all of this i just prefer to use the intel slots turn to damage assist off turn the camera without any assist on turn to the recent source of incoming damage more precisely Definitely keep this off if you're trying to get behind cover and someone shoots you and your operator turns towards them. Yeah, you're probably going to get bodied. Loot auto pickup. Off, pick up only ammo, cash, and armor plates automatically. On, pick up every item automatically except weapons. I leave this toggled on, but I wish there was a section where we can select what you wanna pick up because every time I will go to a loadout drop and I pick up my loadout and I use my smokes and I run into a house, I pick up a concussion grenade. Now I don't have a slot for my smokes anymore. So if I pick up or I buy an ammunition box then i put it down i grab what's in the ammunition box and obviously i'm get concussions instead of smokes and if you toggle this option off you're gonna miss out on picking up armor boxes um gas masks and other things so for me this is a double-edged sword auto mantle turn this off you don't want to look like this guy Parachute. Auto parachute keeps going automatically when dropping from a height that would cause fall damage. Auto once. Parachute automatically opens once before reaching the ground, if not open manually. Then we have manual, the one that I use. Parachute never opens automatically. So my suggestion would be auto once or manual. Tip time. When you're skydiving down, pull your parachute. And if you're about to miss, pull your joystick back. And it will literally center you right where you need to fall. Climbing the stairs button. Turn this off, you don't need it. He only walks up, you can't run upstairs. Crouch, you don't need it. You rather have full control of your operator and you don't want to be crouching in the wrong moments. Moving on to turning corner assist. You don't need it, just turn it off. Auto equip armor, you can toggle this off or on, but I leave it on just because, look here, putting on my plate and I'm able to look at what's going on, I see two people and if I didn't plate up, I could have had gotten a lot more damage done to me. I'm able to move, get in a better position to plate up and re-engage. Tip time. You gotta practice. When you're plating, you can cancel it by tapping your weapon so you can engage if an enemy is coming towards you. Now we're gonna take a look at the movement section. Virtual stick behavior. So analog, the operator's movement speed will depend on how much the virtual stick is pushed. Push further up for faster speeds or to sprint. Always sprint. The operator will instantly move at a sprinting speed when using the virtual joystick. Sprint to stand. Off. While crouching or proning, manually use stance buttons to stand and to sprint. On. While crouching or proning, touch the auto move forward hub 
to immediately stand up and sprint. I have this option turned off, but you can keep it on. Just make sure that you move that sprint button up further because this example right here has it too close. So I stand up. Camera rotation mode, accelerated. The faster you swipe on your screen, the more you would turn your camera. Fixed. Your camera rotation speed is the same no matter how fast you swipe on your screen. I keep this setting accelerated because I do enjoy turning the camera faster. ADS button allows rotation. Off. Can't rotate the camera when holding down the ADS button. On. Can rotate the camera when holding down the ADS button. All right, with this one, I'm going to have a video kind of explain what's going on. When it's on it, when you have your finger on the ADS button, you can move the camera. When it's off, you can't. You can only ADS. Fire button allows rotation. Off, can't rotate camera when holding down fire buttons. On, can rotate the camera when holding down fire buttons. After testing, I found out that the description is misleading. It's actually the ADS firing button that works. The hit fire button does not allow this rotation. So I had to turn off aim down sight when firing, which is located in combat. And I made a clip to demonstrate what this rotation looks like. Throw back button allows rotation. This is a good one, so just keep this one on. Weapon mount movement exit. I keep this on so I can move my joystick so I can exit any surface that I'm mounted on. They also give you a delay time to exit your mount. There's five milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, and 20 milliseconds. Since we're talking about milliseconds, there's not too much of a difference. I have a clip comparing the five milliseconds and the 20 milliseconds. Now moving on to combat, weapon trigger, which we already went over in the overview, but I'm just gonna reiterate that the manual fire is the best one to go for. Auto fire on objects. Off when ADSing weapons will not fire at objects. On when ADS weapon will fire at objects. Custom when ADS weapons will fire at objects. Vehicles are set separately. I don't know too much about this one. I didn't do too much testing, but I just left it at custom. Vehicles, um, it's kind of self-explanatory, so just keep it at enemy only. Auto fire range limiter. Off fire weapons automatically at targets in range only. On fire weapons automatically at targets regardless of range. I don't really understand this description. I think it should be manually when it's off. If anybody knows, you can drop a comment down below. Here's an important one. Single shot fire behavior affects launchers, pump action shotguns, and bolt action sniper rifles. On release, hold down fire buttons and release to fire the weapon. On tap, touch fire buttons to immediately fire the weapon. Custom, customize for launchers, shotguns, and sniper rifles separately. For this one, I selected tap since I'm just used to just tapping when I'm firing any weapon. Here's another really important one. Aim down sight when firing. Off, ADS fire will not enter ADS. On, ADS fire enters ADS at the same time. Custom, set for each weapon type. This is the best way I can describe this, is you can go into your customized hub, you can hide the hit fire button and just use the ADS fire button, which will basically turn into a hit fire and ADS when you toggle the aim down sight button. snap ADS fire button to finger. Off, ADS fire button moves to your finger touch. On, ADS fire stays at its location, which I found is crazy because off should say ADS fire stays at its location and then the on should be the one where it moves with your finger touch. That being said, I have a couple clips to explain and kind of straighten things out for you. Aim down sight behavior. Toggle. Tap the ADS button to enter and exit ADS. Hold. Hold the ADS button to enter ADS. Release to exit. Focus behavior. Auto. Focus automatically with ADS. Toggle. Tap the focus button to focus. Tap again to stop. Tap and hold the focus button to focus. Release to stop. This feature is primarily for snipers. This is for steady aim. When your operator scopes in and if you selected auto, your operator will automatically hold their breath and then exit 
exhale after a couple seconds and then have to regain their breath. And then there'll be an option of uh, some lungs where you have to press if you're still scoped in to regain that steady aim. Now, if you select a toggle, you have to do that manually. So when you scope in, you'll have to manually to regain that steady aim. Now, if you select a toggle, you'll have to do that manually. So when you scope in, you'll have to manually press the lung button to have a steady shot. If you selected hold, you would have to click the lung button and hold it for a steady aim, which is too much. So that's why I selected auto because it's such a simple mechanic. Auto melee is pretty self-explanatory. If they're in range and if you have this on, you will melee them. I don't really like this feature, so I keep it off. Moving on into interactions, assistance vehicle, gyroscope, and outlines. This one I'm still kind of getting used to, sprint door bash. What I struggle with is sometimes I forget that I can run into a door while plating or while reloading, which is a pretty amazing feature. I leave this one off. Force reload, off. Reloading can be interrupted by actions such as sprinting or changing weapons. On, reloading can be interrupted by any actions. Sprint only, reload can be interrupted by sprinting only. Force equipping armor, make sure that this is off. If you have to change to your weapon just in case of an emergency, if this is on, you won't be able to. Equip all armor plates, off. Tap the use armor button to equip one armor plate on. Tap the use armor button to equip all available armor plates continuously. This one's a good one to keep on. Continuously putting on plates simultaneously, that's giving you enough time to be able to think what to do next in the middle of a battle. Aim assist, you definitely need this one, especially going against controller players. Vehicle controls, I keep these at arrows because it's what I've been used to since the very beginning of me playing any of these mobile games. So now we're at gyroscope. This is in a weird spot because it also has the sensitivities and other features once you click into it. It's going to have the reverse axis. It's going to have ADS gyro, movement gyro, change sensitivity by axis, global sensitivity for horizontal and vertical. It has ADS sensitivity multiplier, ADS sensitivity multiplier zoom, and then you have the reset tab. Now moving into combat in the interface section. Left fire display, always on. Hit fire is always available. On when ADSing. Hit fire is available only when aiming down sight. ADS. Off. Hit fire is hidden and unavailable. Fire buttons while auto fire. This one you just have to keep off. You don't really have to worry about it unless you have auto fire on. Show ammo. You don't have to worry about this for both Warzone and MP. Just keep it integrated. This is another one you should keep on. Hit marker display. When it comes to hit marker size, you can keep it from large to small. For me, I just keep it small. Hit marker transparency. Just keep this at max because you want to see your hit markers movement section. Auto sprint lock. This is that little arrow that's above your joystick where you tap it. It will automatically make your operator sprint. So I keep this at floating. Change stance is what we looked at in the overview. So for me, I keep this on split. Maybe for you, you want to merge these. Fix joystick. Off. Movement joystick snaps to your finger. On. Movement joystick is fixed on the screen. I've been using fixed joystick for years, so I do suggest that you keep it on so that you can build that muscle memory like I have. And at times, the joystick might go too low, so you can't even move too much. So now looking at the invert camera, the horizontal and vertical. If you want to toggle these on, be my guest, just not for me. So now looking down at alerts, we have resupply alert and we have reload cancel alert. These are two accessories that are very important. So just make sure that you keep these on. In-game tutorial tool tips. This, just turn it off. You don't need it unless you're ultra new to Warzone and the whole franchise. Moving on to the sensitivity settings. I'm just gonna briefly show my settings right here. I would end the video right here, but this is the ultimate guide. So we're gonna go through audio, language, download, account, and social. And then I'll show you my current sensitivities and my HUD customization. Looking at graphics, you have visual quality, which I have at high not peak because I have some frame rate issues. Performance optimization, I have that at frame rate. Allow high res assist streaming over mobile. That I put at yes, because once I start streaming, I want that to you know help me out. Max frame rates, I have it at uncapped. 
And lastly, field of view or FOV. I have that at 90. Moving down to audio, I pretty much have everything to the max and the rest toggle that on. Moving down to language, I use English, but if you select any of these other languages, it will change the whole text. And on top of that, your operator will start speaking that language, but you would have to go to download and download that resource pack. Clicking on account, you'll be able to see the block list. You'll be able to delete your account and you'll be able to use the two-step factor authentication. Clicking on social, here you're gonna have a variety of different features. You'll be able to toggle on and off different features as well as the party invite, which you can select different options. For me, I have hide and match because I don't wanna have notifications come in during my game. They even go as far as to provide a profanity filter. In voice, you will have different toggle options as well. In this also includes proximity chat and last words voice chat. Quickly looking at others, you can toggle open channels and closed. Okay, here's the current loadout I'm using. If you did skip the video just to look at this, I suggest you to go back because I do have information about the, the virtual joystick, proximity chat, and, and other important information. Hope you guys subscribe because I will be doing updates on these sensitivities.